If the last lecture could be called fun with partial differentials, this lecture be, can be called more fun with partial differentials. What we're going to derive here is a set of equations called the Maxwell. The, this Maxwell is the same as the Maxwell who derived the Maxwell equations which explain propagation of light. Now remember from last lecture, I hope I convinced you that the state functions u, h, internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz free energy, and Gibbs free energy are state functions of two variables. And again, we got that considering only PV work. So for that case, it's only two variables. What I'd like to convince you of here is that, uh, say we take u, which we said was a function of the natural variables s and v. Suppose we take the derivative u with respect to that first one s, a constant volume, and whatever that is, take this with respect to the second variable, how v, this would be a constant s. That is equal to how u changes with that second variable, v, at constant s, and then how that quantity changes with s at constant v. That is to say, it doesn't really matter whether you take the derivative of the first and then of the second, or take it of the second first and then take it uh, derivative of the first variable. Those quantities are equal. And the reason is that these are state variable or state functions. So u is a state function, which means that uh, du is independent of path. So you want to get some place in three-dimensional space. These is the x and the y and u is a z. So it doesn't matter whether you travel along the s axis and then travel up the v axis or travel up the v axis and then travel along the s axis. It doesn't matter how you get from some initial to final state or some infinitesimal change. You can either go along one axis and then the other, or along the other and then the one axis. It's because state functions are independent of path. And that's what Maxwell realized. Oh, these are state functions, and therefore we can write something like this. Let's, uh, let me re reproduce that over here. So how u changes with that first variable, s, at constant second variable, and how that, that quantity changes with the second variable, at a constant s, and we're just going to switch the order of differentiation. We're going to take derivative of v first at constant s, and then take the derivative with respect to s at constant v. Ah, remember from the last lecture, we know what how u changes with s at constant v is temperature. So that is temperature, and how u changes with v at constant s is minus pressure, minus pressure. So that is. All right, so what uh, Maxwell realized, he how temperature changes with volume at constant s. We just substitute in this expression for temperature. So we're taking the derivative with respect to temperature, or derivative of temperature with respect to volume. That is equal to, put that minus sign out there, how pressure changes with entropy at constant volume. This is a Maxwell relation. And that's something you wouldn't think off firsthand. Why is this useful? Well, for instance, if you want to know how pressure changes with entropy, it's kind of hard to change the entropy, but that's equal to the minus of how temperature changes with volume at constant entropy. That's kind of an interesting relation. Let's do the same kind of thing for the other three functions. We said that u, or sorry, h, enthalpy, is a function of s and p entropy and pressure. So it doesn't matter how we take the derivative. We take the derivative with respect to that first one, s, at constant p, and then take the derivative with respect to p at constant s. That is equal to how take the derivative with respect to the first, the second variable, at constant first variable, and then the derivative with respect to s at constant p. What is this one? how h changes with s at constant p. How h changes with s at constant p is temperature, and how h changes with p at constant s is volume. 
So here's another Maxwell relation. How temperature changes the pressure at constant entropy is equal to how volume changes with entropy at constant pressure. That's kind of cool. Another Maxwell relation. Let's do the third one. We had Hemholtz free energy A. We said that was a function of temperature and volume. Therefore, how A changes with temperature at constant volume, and then take the derivative with respect to volume at constant temperature, that is equal to how A changes with volume at constant temperature, and then how that changes with temperature at constant volume. All right, let's take a gander, see what these things are. How A changes with temperature at constant volume how A changes the temperature, that's minus S. Oh, cool, minus S. And how A changes the volume. Well, you know, you know, we could sort of figure this out. What's the conjugate variable for volume? It's, it's pressure with a minus sign. So minus pressure, minus S minus P. So another Maxwell relation is how uh, minus, how entropy changes the volume at constant temperature is minus how pressure changes with temperature at constant volume, constant temperature. Let's put a plus sign just to make that easy. A third Maxwell relation, that's kind of cool. And finally, let's use the Gibbs free energy G. We said that was a function of pressure and temperature. I'll do it one more time, you're probably tired of this, but just one more time. How G changes with pressure, constant temperature, and take the partial derivative of that respect to temperature at constant pressure. That's how, how G changes with temperature at constant pressure and the derivative of that with respect to pressure at constant temperature. Right, what do you think this is and what do you think this is? Well, that's probably related to volume. Uh, yeah, there it is. How G changes with pressure at constant temperature is volume. And how G changes with temperature at constant pressure minus S. So we get the max relation how V changes with temperature at constant pressure is minus how S changes with pressure at constant temperature. Look at that, a th fourth Maxwell relation. You see how those uh, come about? The key point, it rests on the fact that these functions are state functions and state functions, when you go from one from initial to final or when you go infinitesimally, they're independent of paths. So you can go along the first variable and the second, or go along the second then the first, get the same thing. This is what we just did, and here's a summary table, nice summary table of the Maxwell relationships.